John McCagg with JesusChristTrust.net. It's uh, the first church that has been started by a living saint who's, you know, set up and said he is one, he or she. I am doing that just for, you know, so that people know the truth. And if they, you know, I, for me, having access to the truth is the most important thing to have here in our situation called life. So let's move on to the topic. All right. So if you put out a, um, it get into Goog, right? El Gog and Magog, backwards, right? El Gog and Magog. If you put it into Google, can't get it out of death and taxes or whatever, however you remember that. You know what I'm saying? Uh, this little thing pops up here. There is nothing more certain than death and taxes. On November 13th, 1789, Benjamin Franklin wrote, Our new constitution is now established. Everything seems, seems to promise it will be durable. But in this world, nothing is certain except death and taxes. The final part of Benjamin Franklin's quote above is recognized by most U.S. citizens. <laughs> That's your programming. And we die you forever. Okay. Well, let's just follow along here with me. Okay. And, and let's see how true this is. Because nothing they say is true, pretty much. Uh, death and taxes. Let's look into this. All right. Here we go. Death and taxes. Wh thank you, Wiki. <laughs> thank you, Siri. Wiki. Genie. Ginny. Demon. <laughs> death and taxes is a phrase commonly referencing a famous quotation written by America's statesman Benjamin Franklin. Right? We just read that. Okay. Though, here we go right there. Though, Franklin is not the progenitor of the phrase. Oh, in other words, he didn't start it. His usage is the most famous, especially in the United States. Earlier versions of this from the 18th century include a line in Daniel Defoe's The Political History of the Devil. Oh, well, who is Daniel Defoe? Let's get into this. We'll, we'll do two, then we'll do three. Okay, all right. The Political History of the Devil. That's what they just said. See, Daniel Defoe's The Political History of the Devil. And, I, and this is The Political History of the Devil. All right. Daniel Defoe. All right. Let's see. The History of the Devil. <laughs> okay. General scholarly opinion is that Defoe really did think of the devil as a participant in world history. He spends some time discussing John Milton's Paradox Lost and explaining why he considers it inaccurate. Okay. He blames the devil for the Crusades and seems as close to Europe's Catholic powers. Yep. The book was banned by the Roman Catholic Church. Okay. So this this is being quoted by the, you know, Egawi Trusters, Benjamin Franklin, and there's this guy, Daniel Defoe, that guy, who's he, right, who is he, who is this guy, how did this happen, why do we hear about him, Daniel Defoe, now you may not know this, but, let's just read this, Daniel Defoe was an English writer, oh, and a pamphleteer, and spy, Aha, uh -huh, traitor journalist. He is most famous for his novel, Robinson Crusoe. Robinson Crusoe. Published in 1719. 1719. Wait a second. 1719. Okay. 1726 is later. All right. So 1719, which is claimed to be second only to the Bible in its number of translations. Okay. So the second biggest book besides the Bible is the guy that writes the history of the devil. <laughs> Did you know that fact in our storyline? Yeah. Okay. 
Well, that's crazy, isn't it? Uh, oh, well, here's... Let's, let's get into this. Okay. So, what have I done, right? What have I done over at Liberty 8 Academy? You could, you could, uh, if you go to JesusChristTrust.net, let's see, where did that go? If you go to the church website, there's our courses here. And basically, the only course that I got going on here is the debt forgiveness thing, because we can't put it over at uh, Liberty 8 Academy. Because they just shut us down as usual. We're telling you how to get out of debt. <laughs> so I have it in the church's debt forgiveness. Because debts and sins are forgiven. So, ah. Okay, so I've been doing that for... Like, it's... It's, uh... Over... Just over... About one decade now. On YouTube with proof of my first... Uh, court wins and settlement checks and so on getting out of debt before I helped everyone get out of debt still doing it 10 years later this is the information right here okay and so it's supported with this here called the classroom which you could get in and anyone in the church could get in this for free and get in there and be a member and be a student and ask questions okay so Do you remember? There were more than 4,000 days when I gave the information until Judgment Day, what it is. So keep an eye on that. We're, we're counting down. So I've been getting people out of debt for one decade straight with proof, okay? One decade straight. Right? Nothing is certain except death in Texas. So... Yeah, getting out of people out of debt, that's, you know, one miracle. But that now, come 2016 comes along, right? And I start getting everybody out of taxes. That's right, get about everybody out of taxes. So, you can get up here on Liberty 8 Academy. Whoop, I'm not trying to log in. Anyway, on, on my courses, I'm kind of on the background here, on the login and so on. Anywho, if you click on them here, it just brings you over to Liberty Aid Academy. It just like forwards you there. So just click on anything here and you go over there. So in the McCag Mastery Bundle, right? That's where the trust is. You, you uh, operate financially under the trust. And since 2016, I've been proven myself. And I've testimonials for many people that you can, in fact, get out of taxes because what? They, our wealthy controllers figured out how to get out of taxes and hide it. And so they just told us all, you can't get out of taxes. Even they they got out of it. I just, I'm an auditor, so, you know, as an accountant, and I just watch what they did, and I just copy what they did because it has to be legal they're doing it. It's that simple. And it is. So, uh... That's the getting out of uh, taxes part. But did you know? Oh, I forgot to pull this up. This could be fun. We'll do this live. Uh, but did you know? Eternal life. Jesus Christ. Let's see. Eternal life. Oh, what do you know? Back to Wiki. Eternal life. Is that, what you, is that what you think it means? Eternal life is life after death? Oh, is, is that what you think it means? Okay. That's what Wikipedia says right here. It's life after death, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. Well, first of all, there's life after sleep, is it there? Go to sleep. Your body's, oh, it's breathing or whatever, but you're not there. So, okay, you come back into the body after you wake up every day. How's that different? You weren't here. You can't see this world. And then you come back. So, you know, that just proves that uh, consciousness, consciousness is never lost, period. That's the point. But oh, this eternal life actually means something else. 
And if you look at that picture right there, the ladder of divine ascent, right? That's really, that's really it, isn't it? And everybody else kind of falls off. I just made it to the same level, which is that divine ascent, the top one, and be alive. You know, it's a, it's a blessing, yes. It's a curse, yes. You know, you you do work for God, and and uh, you know, you just have to. You're in the spiritual hierarchy. You have to follow orders, and that's it. I'm not separate from my consciousness. Is not separate from what they call the Holy Spirit. You know, is not separate from God. It just isn't. So I know what I should do. Just as everyone on the 33, they know what they should do. I know what I should do. And I know what I know. But eternal life. The, now, we're talking about life, right? Oh, don't forget. We started this out. Death and taxes, right? Death and taxes. Death and taxes. What, what about the death part? Well, obviously, you know, the, uh, the 33, right? They, uh. Yeah, you know, they constantly live a new life every time, playing the same role until their role maybe changes after many, many uncountable lifetimes. And up the ladder they go until they finally play the game as one of the 7,000. Anyway, so, but Eternal Life actually has uh, a specific other meaning is what I'm learning from the outcome from everyone signing this trust. Now, if you, what does God hate? Well, God doesn't hate anyone. That's true. So I take that back. Uh, but what does God dislike the most, you know, from his creation? What does God dislike the most from humans? What's the number one thing God dislikes the most? Hypocrisy, right? You say one thing, but you do another. That's what God does it, you know, that's where this whole go to the most difficult place because they have the most to learn because they're hypocrites, right? They're what we call liars. Okay, liars, hypocrites. <coughs> that's what eternal life is not granted to them, right? Eternal life is granted to them as a fairy until they learn their, you know, everything, right? So when I, when I told you, hey, can't get out of death and taxes. Well, first of all, you were never being taxed, right? It was your straw man. It was your corporate fiction, your person. It was your LLC. Those things were being taxed, but you, the human, were not being taxed. Okay? So just knowing that gets you out of taxes. You see, you don't have to pay taxes. So that means, oh, hey, there's a method around this financial thing. Yes. See, you got out of taxes, right? But like with that mental hurdle and then you found the way to get out of paying taxes for your person and by by using a trust instead right oh great and now the government gives you money and you don't give the government money what a great hack okay that's getting out of taxes plus right so not only did i solve the riddle right i i, I mean let's let's get into this for a minute Let's, let's keep going here. Uh, perform, work a miracle. So if if what we're told is, you know, from the jump, right? You can't get out of death and taxes. So getting out of death, getting out of taxes would be a miracle, right? That's what it is. So it you either perform or work a miracle, right? God makes miracle happen, right? You, you don't. I don't, right? But... We are here in a body to perform, to do, to perform actions, right? So, uh, what does the word perform mean? Where does that come from? So, perform, the first part of a per, peri, right? Is a fairy like being, right? Like, <laughs> a fairy has to form into, uh, you know, miracle so the fairies the 33 they they are programmed to a certain length that they can't go past it right they they are like the characters are disney working there you know you, you could throw a drink at them you know they're not going to throw one back at you and they'll probably go change their costume or whatever you'll get escorted out of the park you know what i mean but 
Uh, they're not gonna. No, no, you know, direct, exact. I mean, you know, they're here to make sure that we our karma happens, right? In Disney, if you throw the drink at the at the character, well, you're gonna get escorted out of the park. That's your karma. You see, they're here. The fairies are here. The fairies are here to perform the angels, angel fairy. That's that's a, the same thing, okay? And so, they're here, like on the Truman Show. They have to be the characters here. You see, we're here. The seven thousand who won't kneel the ball are here. To win their soul in the game, get back to God, yay! And uh, yeah, but there has to be a game to play to win our soul, right? So that's what they're all doing. They're running this game like the Truman Show. Oh, okay. And after you run the game and you know earn your wings and stuff like that, one day you could play the game like one of the seven thousand. You see what I'm saying? You get chosen. Oh, you know it's hard. They don't really necessarily want to play. Do you see what I'm saying? It's not easy. It's not hard. They they have have everything here you know what i mean the home what to do they know everything they know everything they're can you imagine knowing literally everything to the point where you can't unknow it and then deciding oh uh, okay i'll wipe my memory and, and play this game well, that's what that's where i am and then you got to figure it out so but angels right you see their programming is fixed in other words they don't have free will. You see, they just don't. They're evolving into the capacity to play the game, which is as close as we will come to free will. God runs the game. We're God's creations. How is not everything, you know, predetermined, predetermined, right? In other words, angels take orders from God. That's what they do. So once you're then, you know, you're you're a fairy oh okay you, you'll play your character role god trusts you and you're you're winning god's trust you get a better role and, and, you know you're not on a desert island by yourself so you can play a role and get better and better and then one day play the game okay means you're trusted by god you follow god's orders angels fairies them it doesn't look like it right but they have no free will they're under the direct orders of god and that's what they do. They do exactly what God says. And so what they can do compared to regular humans is a whole bunch of miracles. You see? Them angel, they can pop in and out of the ether, shapeshift, you know, run everything, know everything. I mean, appear here and there and, you know, so many things. They know everything that's going on here. They know the timeline, when the stocks go up, when they go down, Tesla, blah, 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 the whole stupid script, the Beatles, everything. They know it all. So, and they're given powers so they can, you know, perform miracles so they can operate as needed to be the Disney characters so we can win ourselves, okay? So... As you're winning your soul, you get to the end of it, and God trusts you and throws you back into the body like me. Oh, okay. You're working for me. Oh, well, yeah, of course I'm working for you. I did, you're real? What? You know, you meet with them, you're like, of course I'm working for you. And you like, you don't, ha you have a reaction to God that automatically the only thing, everything else inside you is erased. And the only thing that is left is to serve God. You don't have another desire or feeling. He, meeting with God erases it. Or just by that interaction, that's an outcome. One of the outcomes of it is erasing desire for anything except serving God. So what does that mean? You're back to trusted by God. Okay, you win the game. You can come home. You don't have to be an angel with no free will. When I gave you free will, you still come back to God. Come on home. You don't have to play the game anymore. Congratulations. You see? That's how you win. All right. Meaning, you become, right, to, to, to what? Here we go. Let's go back here. To perform a miracle, you have to be trusted by God. Do you see what I'm saying? The angels, the fairies, they're all trusted by God. They are they were created by God. God does, you know, what to send them or whatever. You know, the sub-manager of God, the devil tells them what to do and all that stuff. And they do it perfectly, you know, like a fairy, like an angel. And so 
you know, you get to, uh, let's talk about this for a second. Because what I'm getting at is, uh, you know, can any Christian learn how to do miracles? I mean, what am I doing? I can teach some miracles, right? But you have to perform the actions. You have to gain God's trust. God has to, not just, you don't just get to sign the, the uh, trust. And then God trusts you. You sign the trust and then God, oh, let me see if I trust you. And if you, you know, go through that and you stick to what you said irrevocably, oh, I'll just, you know, I'll do my best, right? Don't worry, be happy, do your best, and God will do the rest. And the common law also as treat your neighbors as yourself. If your neighbors act the fool, an idiot, then if you were in your neighbor's place, you would expect that someone would go out there and yell at you to stop doing what you're doing. Okay, because that's being loving, you know. Hey, idiot, stop firing your gun off over here. You're scared by children. And you, know, and, you know, you know you can't be killed or whatever, so you just walk over there and give a what for, and they're like, you know, they learn. Especially if they try to raise a gun on you. They're like, oh, that, oh, whoops, I'm not in charge here. No, you're not in charge, so uh, quiet down over here. You see? Thank you. And so when you go through the game, and if you meet with God, and you get thrown back in the body of your saint, perfect bass, whatever name, right? You know, Christ consciousness, God realized, blah, blah, blah. Like, the name for winning the game, but not quite winning the game <laughs> enough. You got to go back in. So like a saint, oh, yeah, you, you're going to be a saint. Oh, saint? You mean you, I'm saved now? Yeah, but you're working for me. Christ, T, right? The cross, saint, S-A-N-E-T, right? Saint, I'm saved. You're working for me. Yeah, now I'm saved, but could I come home? Yeah, no, you're working for me for a while. <laughs> oh, that's okay. You see? So he's like, get back in the body, just like the other fairies, angels, all that. Get back in the body until you, until I say, you you know, it's time. So, for me, made it to the final thing, but have to go till Judgment Day. Because, what's the role of a saint? What's the role of a saint? Mainly to send people to hell, right? Almost, I said, anyone that interacts with me, almost everyone gets sent to hell. Why? Because they deny the truth. Anything I say to them, they're like, blah, blah, blah. Oh, I tell the truth. Oh, they deny it. Where do they go? Hell. They didn't learn in the body. You interact with a saint, told you the truth, and you're like, no. Oh, whoops. That's a game loser, right? Oh, you lost the game. Whoop, go back. <laughs> it's it's funny. So, I mean, it's not funny. Yeah, but, but that is the role I have to accept. The very few who react to the truth with, oh, I've been looking for the truth. I've been looking to see if God is real. I've been looking. I've been wondering, you know, I'm being lied to, but what's the truth? You see? Oh, I could just spit it out. Uh, I mean, I have I have a 50 topics written down. I'll just sit down and write down 50 topics. So I'm like, uh, I could do this 50, these 50 videos on things that no one has ever talked about before and solve these mysteries. But, um, you know, time is not... <laughs> Time isn't easy here when you're when you're a performer for God, especially if you don't have, you know, going back into the ether, right? I don't have that. I don't I don't have that anymore. I I I'm performing in a body. That's it. <laughs> Until Judgment Day, and that brings us back to okay. So I can perform miracles, right? And that is why because I'm trusted by God, and that gives us. Eternal life. What is eternal life? Eternal life is until... Where is this? That's not it. Where, oh, there it is. Until Judgment Day, right? It just means, like me, a saint, right? If you sign the trust, and then you follow the golden rule, like right? Jesus had two commandments, love God, and what it would right? What's the other one? Right, the golden rule: love God first, of course. Number one, see a two commandments: love God. Number two, treat your brothers and sisters as you would yourself. That's it. Those two things. And if you were doing those things as 
you know, as best as you can. We're not, you know, humans aren't all knowing and all powerful and all that stuff. So, you know, God created you in a limited capacity that way to feel yourself limited. But in fact, we're not because we never, how could anything be separate from God? We're, we're having the experience of feeling separate from God during this lifetime, but that's just a feeling we have so that when it's removed, right, we understand what it's like to be connected with God. And that brings us back to the root of everything, right? Why is this all happening? You have to ask that question at some point. Why? Like, why? God, hey, all, all powerful, all knowing God, why are you doing this? You know, like, <laughs> hey, number one. And the reason is because God, in, in you know, the everything, the nothing, and it's featureless and, you know, I, I, I mean, I, I didn't mean feature formless, you know, did it have a physical that's non-physical nature and all that? The just God, just everything wanted to know self one day. And what would happen? The not self, the fit, you know, this limited realm that keeps repeating itself got created in a way to throw the drops of the ocean right us were like drops of the ocean the sea overhead and the bubble we're inside that that ocean is the form of god or one of them but we're like drops of that ocean you know stuck inside this crystal sphere feeling caged inside this cage because we are caged <laughs> inside this cage and so in order to know self you have to really know because you're, if you're everything, that's God, right? Oh, I'm everything. How do you know self? You don't know. You're you're literally everything. So how do you know self by know by putting yourself in a limited capacity and not self like a human and animal like this whole process we go through of all the forms of evolution and then evolution of consciousness, you know God, that whim to know self by God created this impossible you know, situation created by God. And this is the cage. The metaphor being, and really the real true metaphor is, a parrot flies free in the jungle and has no concept of freedom. Okay? Has no concept of freedom. But you put that parrot, right? And parrot, what a bird, right? If you tell a parrot what to say, it'll say it. So that's us. You tell a parrot what to say, it says it. Tell a pair what to do, it does it. That's us. Parrot in a cage. So you put a parrot in a cage. And then it lives in there for some time, right? And then later, you open up the cage door and let that uh, parrot back out into the jungle to fly free. Guess what? It understands freedom then. Okay? It understands you know, the not limited state of God. Oh, I understand myself as God now because I had this experience of not being connected to God and then once the connection happened, it's like you're overwhelmed by it. You know what I'm saying? It's impossible. Then you know, you see? You know because you knew what you weren't and now you know what you are. That's why I can say I'm a saint. Oh, you are, huh? Oh, yeah, come on down and say I'm not. <laughs> Like the cops, like the, you know, whoever, come on down. That's the point of saying it. Come on down. If you say I'm not to my face, you know, fine. If on the flip side, though, you want to have your sins forgiven, I'm trusted by God, right? I can perform a miracle. God makes miracles happen, obviously, but I'm reconnected to God. You know, I, I'm not separate from God anymore. That's the separation has been removed by God due to my actions. Do you see? God pre-planned my actions, but I did them. So here, here we are. Okay? So that's the miracles being performed, right? Eternal life. Uh, I've gotten people out of death and taxes. Absolutely trained from our beginning of life for everyone that you know those you can't get out of so that's two miracles performed and that i show you could do too 
I help you through the process of so that you can perform those miracles as well. Getting out of debt and getting out of taxes. That's a death. I keep saying death, don't I? Death. You get out of death and taxes. But I can also get you out of debt. Isn't that funny? Uh, I've also done, you know, you can't find City Hall. Right? I, I, of course you can. <laughs> yeah, I got proof. Uh, you know, you can't ever come to plague. Of course, you know, that happened. Right? <laughs> Uh, you know, deliverance and exorcism are, are miracles that, you know, only certain individuals could perform. And I got proof of doing that. And uh, next miracle, right? Free home in the name of God, Jesus Christ. Put up that proof too, recently. Another miracle. So, you, to the, to the uh, people there that I interact with, at some point, it becomes incumbent on me to, in order to help you to say I'm a saint. That doesn't help me. I already am one. I don't become one because I said I am. That doesn't have anything to do with it. That has to do with you and your reaction, and not just you, everyone. When I'm out there, you know, they read minds and stuff like that. If, if they don't treat me as I should be treated, right? Because the goal of life is to become a saint, to, is to become God-realized. It's not necessarily to be put back in the body and become a saint, but it is to get to God. You, not everyone has to become a saint. they like, oh, you get it in depth, or I, you know, I died in your name, or whatever. You, I, I made it till Judgment Day, and I'm in. You know, they're, they're, not everyone has to be a saint and perform out here. That's, that's not everyone's role. But it is someone's role to do that. There are saints of the Bible. There they are. That is just, at this point, my role until the until Judgment Day. And then it becomes not my role. So the spiritual hierarchy has to be visible. And individuals have to be able to take advantage of it. Just like the individuals that came down here and to get delivered. They were like, oh, we need, to, we need deliverance. And, and uh, they were like, oh, yeah, where should we go? Where should we go? Well, let's go to, if that guy says he's a saint, let's go to him. And that's what they did, and that's what happened. You see? They did it because they want the demon out of them. They made mistakes before in their life. God says, I'll, you know, if you ask for forgiveness, you can get deliverance. You, you know, you can, if it's for the forgiveness of your sins. In other words, you have to want it. I can't just walk up to anyone and be like, you're delivered. No, 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 this is about choice, about free will. You have to be, okay, I'm ready to come to Jesus Christ. You have to decide. And let's just say it, no one comes to God. No one comes to God without miracles. It doesn't happen because uh, you're just like, lied to your whole life so it's like oh there's an invisible whatever you know unless you see evidence of miracles you know they are working for god you're not too sure of you know what i'm saying it's like well i'd like to go over there but i you know i got bills i got children i got i got all this stuff happening man i can't just come over there unless you know you're who you say you are and the only way i know for sure is if i see miracles have proof of miracles that's the only methodology there is no other way Oh, this whole unseen world is true and God is real and all that. Oh, okay, show me the proof. Why wouldn't you? You see, so that's the only method that someone comes all the way to God. Because everything you experienced up to that point of a miracle turns out was a bunch of stuff which wasn't true. And now you have a new foundation of your reality. Oh, I experienced that miracle. So how do I, you know, who did that on me? What, they, what else do they know, you know? And then you begin to see reality. And then on your karma and others, you know, you could begin to have a positive effect. You could turn your life around at that point and not before. You can't do it before because you don't know the truth. So you're like, oh, I'm doing good. How would you know you're doing good? You don't even know what's going on. You know nothing. Oh, I'm doing good. What? Oh, yeah? What What was that? Paying the bankers, I was good. Oh, you think? Or are we supposed to reveal that, you know, we could use the name of God and not pay the bankers, you know? What, see, which one? Yeah, no. Okay, so you can only know the truth 
And spiritually, you could only bring someone as far as you've gotten. In other words, if you know the truth up to this point, oh, you can share it with someone, but is it the full truth now? So only one who's connected to God and has a proof can really help anyone that comes along that wants, right, to be close to God, number one, right, love God, or, you know, to treat his brothers and sisters as he wished to be treated. How do I do this? I don't, you know, let's get rid of that demon first, deliver him, right? And I got asked recently, oh, is alcohol okay, you know? If, uh, you know, I, I was like, no, sorry, it's just not. What's the name of it? D-liver, you know what I mean? Like, you don't, don't use alcohol, it messes up your liver. So, you know, no, not, no alcohol. It has no purpose. Yeah, use it on your skin or something or a wound, right? But it's no good. It, it, and if you say, oh, well, I'm, I'm still drinking whatever, but okay, well, sorry. <laughs> you can, you can just wait it out. People ask me a question and I answer, you know, they come to me and I, I have this question. Oh, here's the answer. So now that you know the truth of that situation you asked about, what are you going to do? Are you going to do what you found is right? In other words, the truth is what's right. So are you going to do that or are you not going to do it? Because it's based on your actions. Oh, you asked me something. Cause, so really, you know, Mayor Bob was just quit at answering people, you know what I mean? Because it's like, am I helping you? Am I hurting you? You know what I mean? Why don't you just come around me and see what happens, right? Last, you know, the last deliverance... The, the last deliverances that happened to me around, around me were sort of automatic, or at least began that way, just by getting physically close to me from someone that wanted to get closer to God, they started to, you know, have a physical reaction, like throwing up, and you know, like vomiting, and like it, you know, that thing started to come out of them, and, and they started to have a physical reaction like that, it just happens in, in my presence if their goal is to get to god if that's you know what they're interested in then oh you yeah well it'll be miraculously you know showed to you that demons are real and that's a miracle when the other side comes into this side when infinity comes into non-infinity and you see you know the eternal in, in the non-eternal here you're, you have to then go realize everything you were told up to this point is a lie and then you're like oh well maybe my grandfather wasn't a monkey you know <laughs> yeah wouldn't grandfathers still be monkeys if if a great somebody's grandfather was a monkey wouldn't somebody's grandfather oh my grandfather's still a monkey check this out yeah that's not happening <laughs> what do you put that's you don't see evidence of that so no and my grandfather's not a dinosaur either i mean just the stories they come up with so I wanted to talk about this uh, eternal life and why it is possible for anyone that size of trust to receive eternal life. What was eternal life? Well, let's, let's, let's check on the amount of days we have left. Whoops. On this one. Right? 3,795. See, eternal is till judgment day. And, and really... Anyone that signed this trust, this this is 2016, okay? This is for real. This is why I'm bringing this video up, okay? This is why you have to understand this. Ever since people that signed this trust in 2016, everyone that, you know, who, who isn't evil, straight up evil that's like stolen by work, it's just absolutely pure evil. There's some of them that come along and sign this trust, absolutely. But if you're doing your best and you sign the trust, none of those people are going to die, Literally, eternal life, meaning till judgment day, you can't be killed. That's what it means in the Bible, too. Not just, yeah, you have a soul that doesn't die, obviously. But eternal life, for real. Like, you're going to go through these next ten years, and if you choose to, and you, you're working for God and so on, you'll have multiple experiences where you should absolutely be dead, and you're not. And... You know, God will have saved you, and eternal life is real. I try to get killed so many times, I can't even tell you. Just because I, you know, what should be with God, 
why do you want to be in a body, right? Like, like it's just the worst, you know, it's just like it being in a cage. It's just the worst. And once you know that you have an experience of being where you're going to go, and now you're put back in the cage, hey, you go back to prison and help out the prisoners. Okay, like for the day? No, 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 no. Go in, get locked inside, and help out the prisoners. It's like, wait a minute. Go back inside the prison? Yeah, go back inside the... Wait, I just got free. No, go back for the whole rest of the time. Go back in and go into the jail cell with the rest of the prisoners and go into the jail. Right? Because you're working for me. You say you work for me. Oh, yeah. that's Yeah, sure. That's totally what you want to do when you get out of prison. When you jump out of that cage and leave the body and you're with God. The, the thing you want to do about five seconds later is get back in the body and help everybody. Ah, oh, ooh. <laughs> you know, that, it's hard. So, but then I realized, oh, can't be killed by the other team. How does this, you know, people need to know this. And then how do we expend, extend this to piece of a living situation and so on? And that's about the free home and everything. And so eternal life, a video on eternal life, can't get out of death and taxes. Well, guess what? Everyone's out of death. The signs this trust and does their best guaranteed by jesus christ eternal life oh come at me come at me anyone right it's been a decade i dare anyone do anything get your high-powered rifle from two miles away and get take a shot right i don't care i forgive anyone that takes me out of this body and i thank them and but you can't because lots have tried i know it could do it so, and did you know that extends to you, you too? In other words, you're 100% invincible. What are you going to do to help your brothers and sisters now that you know you can't be killed? What are you going to do? I mean, I, I honestly, I, I, sorry for me, I, I wait to hear, you know, from God, I can't even come up with the next beer club. Like, I think I've done every beer, you know, perform performed all the miracles here are there any left to overcome i don't even what you know any meaningful ones to get us uh, you know get these this boot off our freaking neck you know by the bankers anything else we got left to do i don't know you got to do it yourself is what i've showed you see all right you could do this you turn a life check it out eternal life go go live as if you had eternal life because you do what will you do you know that's like a superhero you're like superman or whatever okay maybe you can't fly but why i could walk over there and same stuff could happen you see what are you doing with that you interacted with a saint you know i tell the truth now you know this truth what are you going to do what are you going to do you see what i done point is what are you going to do now 